guys, what's going on? Isaac here with Civil Engineering Academy. I'm excited to be with you today. I got a fun episode for you today. I interview a good friend of mine. We went to school together, Melissa Brady. She is a transportation engineer for WSP. That's a company in California. Um, and she manages some massive projects. She is a transportation engineer. Some of her favorite projects in the past have been uh, the Mountain View Corridor in Salt Lake City, Utah. Now she's in California working on some big projects over there as well. And we talk all about it in this episode. But it's fun to bring Melissa on because not only do I think we need more women in engineering, but it's also fun to hear her story, how she got into it, some of the challenges that she's faced as well, and things of that nature. So there's a lot that we cover. There's some really great advice that's detailed in this episode, and it was just a pleasure to interview her in this episode. So, um, you know, it's going to be a good one for you, and it's going to be coming right up. I really do appreciate those that are leaving comments. If you leave some great comments, we appreciate reviews either on YouTube in the comment section or even on our podcast episodes. If you're listening to those on audio, we do appreciate reviews on there as well. So go check us out, civilengineeringacademy.com if you need PE or FE resources. But we are excited to interview Melissa today as she details her venture into civil engineering and gives some great advice. And that's uh, coming right up. All right, what's going on, everybody? Uh, Isaac here. I have Melissa Brady with me today. How's it going, Melissa? Going good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on. Um, I think before we dive into this, people should know that we actually went to school together. Yes, it's been just a few years. <laughs> Starting to feel a little old here, but uh, yeah, it's uh, always good to catch up, though, especially uh, a few states separating us these days. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, so now you're in California, I'm in Utah, but uh, I want to reconnect and I think this is, this is going to be fun. So thank you for joining me. This is going to be really good. Yes. Um, I've provided a little bit of an intro about yourself, but why don't you dive into a little bit more about yourself, maybe how you got into engineering and what, what, what do you do now? Yeah, of course. Um, so engineering uh, was not originally my desire, but I always... I had a somewhat connected world. I think a lot of engineers wanted to go into architecture, our big competitor, right? It's mm. something we, we don't like to talk about. Um, <laughs> but um, when I was in elementary school, an architect came to our school and gave this great presentation. And it was something that just really interests me and, you know, got me really kind of thinking about what I wanted to do. Um, so i Fortunately, unfortunately, I don't know. I have a big brother. Uh, he actually knew since he was three. I don't know how a three-year-old knows this, but hmm. that he always wanted to be an engineer. So he convinced me that architecture was not the way to go, that I should go with the engineering route. So kind of switched courses on that way and followed up that, you know, what goes better with architecture than structural engineering. Hmm. Um, learned very quickly that was not for me though. So, uh, <laughs> so that that was definitely not it. Um, no, so I, I kind of went through that course of, you know, just trying to figure out what part of engineering really was for me um, all through how, throughout middle school, high school, really stuck with the drafting courses. And then of course, entering into college. Um, and then when I was in college, of course, um, I think you and I had environmental engineering classes together, if I remember right. Those were kind of, because yeah, you were ahead of me in few. school. There, I think there was yeah. a few we had. But yeah, so, environmental was a tough one. Yeah, <laughs> that was definitely not for me either. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but trying to decide, I was working for a land development uh, firm at the time as an intern and was really enjoying it. But unfortunately, um, as we talked about a little while ago, um, you know, that time period was not real stable in our economy. So when the recession hit, engineering world kind of, we were fortunate that we were hit last, but being in land development kind of changed my whole world. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up focusing real heavily on water resources. That still didn't work out for me. <laughs> so it's <laughs> like I kept going tumbling down this road um, that, you know, it's, Everywhere I turned, it felt like there just wasn't really a whole lot of options. And lo and behold, transportation was um, still rolling right along. 
Um, so at the time in Salt Lake, I was, uh, UDOT had released Mountain View Corridor. Mm -hmm. So that was in development. And so I started, um, I would say I was politely trying to get an interview, but it was borderline harassing one of the PMs. <laughs> I was trying just to get my name in the door, um, constantly calling, trying to get a position, and finally um, they gave in and hired me. So obviously I did something right. Um, right. And kind of fell into transportation in that way. In all honesty, I still at the time wasn't sure I wanted to be in transportation. I had it in my mind that I didn't want to do transportation. Hmm. But being on a big project like that just totally changed my mind. And I, I actually fell in love with it. Wow. It was something that I really enjoyed. And having, you know, being on the roadway highway side, it's, Kind of get to see all parts of what goes into it so yeah. it's kind of interesting but it, it's been a kind of a long road it's like i said i felt like constantly like having the doors <laughs> closed and it's i i always tell I, I do a lot of presentations with students and i'm always telling them it's like don't just automatically block out that you're not going to do something because i think my sophomore year i was like i am not going to be a transportation engineer like <laughs> <laughs> that's not what i'm going to be and here I am. <laughs> that's great. No, I think that's really wise because, you know, every engineer I think should be flexible in their options that are that are presented in front of them. And a lot of times you just don't know what you don't know. And when you're in school, you get a very small glimpse of maybe some things that you're studying. But when you get out into the real world and see how things and all the pieces fit together, um, sometimes you want to change course or you do something you you find out you want to do and you go for it so that's yeah, interesting absolutely. well yeah and it's you know what really surprised me was some of the aspects about transportation engineering that i didn't think i would like all that much are actually some of my favorite parts like wow. i really enjoy that the public has a strong opinion about the kind of work that we do and that was something that i thought i would without a doubt hate I, you know, I didn't want everybody, or I thought I didn't want everybody telling me how to do my job, but it's, it's enjoyable because engineering is kind of a mystery to the general public. They don't, you say you're an engineer and they're like, oh, that's oh, great. Yeah. Over so trains? what do you do? <laughs> you drive a train? <laughs> yeah. So it's just very much a mystery. But when you say, oh, well, I'm a transportation engineer. I, I work on freeways immediately like a light bulb goes off and they can have a conversation. So there's opportunities to kind of educate about what it is that we do exactly. And so, mm. uh, so it's kind of nice to be able to have that dialogue and not just them turn and walk away. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. So take us now to what you do. I mean, what, what's your title? What are you doing today? So I am currently at WSP in Orange, um, which is located in Orange County, California. I have two roles in the office. So one, my, I guess our roles just, our titles recently changed. So right now I'm a senior consultant engineer okay. uh, for the roadway highway team. And then, which is kind of like a, just a lead engineer on it. Uh, I, because our projects are very large, I am usually PM, deputy PM on a lot of these projects. And then aside from that, I am also on the operations team. So it's wow. um, specifically, it's the local project operations manager is my title. And I oversee two offices for that role. And essentially what that is, is just helping our PMs manage the business side of their projects and make sure that, you know, we're we're managing the profitability of our business and that projects continue to be successful and um, you know, watching it for those warning signs, keeping them on track and checking in with the PM. So, wow. um, it's, it's an interesting balance between the two, but it's, a it's a, it's a good insight having the two also. <laughs> so, wow. So Melissa, you are super busy. I know this because you also have a family Yes. and you're running all this engineering stuff. So, like, how do you balance? How do you, what's, what's the work-life balance? How do you do all this? Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny because I've 
I always get told, oh, you're a superhero. By no means am I a superhero or anything <laughs> even remotely close to that. Um, it's definitely a challenge. Every day is a challenge, and it's something that I'm always working at to try to maintain that work-life balance. Um, one of the key factors is, uh, and this was a piece of advice that I got through a uh, round table through Women's Transportation uh, seminar so WTS locally they did a round mm. table and there was a city manager that said she takes her calendar and before she allows work on it she circles out time for her family mm. and that time is automatically blocked off and, it, and I feel like that is such an important thing to do just in our lives whether or not it's you know necessarily a dance recital or a baseball game or you know, anything specific, but just to designate that time and not allow work to infringe on it. Because it's so easy to allow work to just kind of creep into our personal lives. Oh, to, all the time. Or to become, yeah, it's especially now, more than anything right now with COVID and working from home. Um, oh, you know, yeah. It's, it's so easy to be like, oh, it's just five minutes. And then five minutes turns into 20 minutes and it's an hour later, you're still sitting at your computer. Um, so it's very easy to allow that time just to get, you know, just to suck you in. And the next thing you know, you know, your, your kids are in bed. Yeah. So I just try to always set a time. And my husband knows that. He'll tell me, you know, if I need a little bit more time, he's like, okay, well, we'll tell me a time. And he'll come in and he'll tell me, he's like, okay, well, it's six o'clock. Get off it's Like, the okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and we have that policy. It's, you know, when we make a commitment to each other that, you know, the computer goes off, the computer goes off. Like, yeah. yeah we're done. That's smart. So, uh, you know, no, obviously funny? there's except. Oh, God. oh, you brought up this whole COVID thing. Um, I've noticed, I mean, personally and talking with others that people, you know, you're constantly working from home, so it's harder to turn it off. And, yeah. and a lot of people are missed, like they actually miss that commute time because they could decompress driving into work and then leaving work and leaving everything behind and coming, coming home. And now with COVID, you're working right at home. And so it's hard to turn it off because yes. you got to go from like, you know, engineer mode and then you open the door and you're back into family mode and yeah. what's, you know, what's for dinner. <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good point. Like my team, we've actually established um, a check-in time. And initially when we were first starting at home, um, we weren't going to do it every day and we all agreed that we kind of enjoyed doing it every day, but we take a half hour at the very end of the day and we all get on a phone call together oh. um, for Skype and we play games and just catch up on the day with each other. So it's, um, I mean, and sometimes it's, we'll talk about, um, you know, questions that might've came up, lessons learned or anything like that, but we don't talk project specific details. We don't talk anything like that. Um, I, we have, uh, one member of our team is a certified yoga instructor, so we've been known to do yoga with her. You know, she gets on video and we'll do yoga nice. <laughs> as a team. <laughs> so it's it's been fun in that way. As, like you said, it's a good way to break it up. And then five o'clock hits and it's like, all right, everybody have a good night. See you later. <laughs> so. Well, that's great. I think that's a great tip and tool for people as well, for engineers. Do you have any other advice for like any... Um, I don't know, tips, tools, or advice for growing engineers and that are, uh, I guess, whether it's a school tip or a, uh, you know, decompressed tip like we just talked about. Is there any other tips you get? Uh, you know, the biggest tip I have just for really any level of engineer is, you know, to build connections, get to know everyone and anyone you can within our community, build those friendships, those relationships. Um, we're a very small community, so it's it doesn't feel that way going into it, and it's very intimidating when you are first starting out to start going to events and not knowing anybody, mm -hmm. but we all have something in common for starters. I mean, we're all engineers, so yeah. it's not like we don't have something to talk about, <laughs> but, you know, we all cross paths in one way or another. I've, I've crossed paths with people from other states. Um, whether it be, you know, in my office with people traveling or me traveling to other states, um, crossing paths, but uh, it's it's good to have those connections for various reasons. Um, 
personal future, meeting your future goals, um, even project goals. Maybe um, they might be a resource needing on a project. Mm. You never quite know what kind yeah. of connection. Maybe they might need you for um, their podcast that they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. That's a great connection. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, I like that. Make connections, everybody. They're good. It's good stuff. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, what's, uh, I guess what's a, just to keep things moving, but what, has there been a lesson learned that you've ever had, you know, through a mistake made or something you've observed from a distance even that you could share? Oh, yes. Um, trust your gut. I mean, there's, gut. Yeah, there, there's been many times it's, you know, you might have even a senior manager or somebody telling you something or um, you feel like there's a process, but maybe you should be doing something a little bit differently, mm -hmm. but you just keep proceeding. It's okay to stop and take a moment and back up a second and reevaluate the situation. Um, and it still pops up every now and then. Uh, even, you know, I had one recently that it's happened where I, I went back and said, I, I, I should just listen to my gut and stop for a moment. Um, luckily, it wasn't a big deal, but I think the biggest one was um, very early in my career. And I've used this as an example before. So those who know me that might be listening in, um, my first like six months right out of school first like official engineering job I had a senior engineer call me up because I sat right outside of the office of a senior manager and he said hey I'm trying to get into this file and he has it locked up is he there I said well no his office is dark he said well can you get on his computer I said, well it, it's locked well just turn it off I, I questioned, I said, I, I don't think I should do that. I said, no, 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 it's fine. I, I've talked to IT, it's fine. This is all over the phone. And you know, that got instinct, but he was higher up than me and knew at the job. And despite not feeling okay about it, I listened and I did it because it was a senior manager. And sure enough, the, that senior manager had lost all the information, all the work he had been working on. Oh. I was very grateful that um, that senior manager did not hold it against me, <laughs> yeah. um, which goes into another piece of advice to always be honest and tell the truth. <laughs> be willing to admit your mistake. Mm, um, and I was, I told him I, I questioned it and I, sh you know, I should have, you know, call, I should have not done it first off and made a stronger attempt and been more forceful to stand my ground. Um, but thankfully he didn't hold it against me. <laughs> so. oh, that's good. That's a good story. Yeah, oh there, man. I can't so. imagine how you would feel in that scenario. Yeah, it's a tough one, but it, I think people are frequently put in those positions where, you know, you have someone that's senior than you telling you to do something that, and it just doesn't sit quite right with you. Mm -hmm. And luckily in that instance, it was something that was ultimately recoverable. It wasn't something that ultimately caused harm. I mean, yeah, it was work and we obviously don't want to lose work, but it didn't cause physical harm in any way. And there are certain yeah. situations that could, uh, but being put in that situation is never easy for anybody. And sometimes you just have to trust your gut and be able to stand your ground based off of that and know that what you're doing is right and it's okay to say no. Yeah, no, that's great advice. Yeah, I've seen your people come in and, and you're brand new. You. You, you want to make everybody happy, I imagine. And yeah. when they ask you to do stuff, you probably just want, you know, you just do it. But trust your gut. Good advice. Trust your gut. So uh, I'm curious, what is there a project, a favorite project you've worked on before now in all the years you've been working? Um, you know, Mountain View Corridor is still very near and dear to my heart mm -hmm. just because it was my first transportation project. Um, and there are a lot of elements to it. Uh, but the cur a current project I'm currently working on um, is also very close just because it's it's new and it's exciting. Um, I'm working on one. It's in Ventura County. 
So it's the US, one, US 101 uh, Improvement Project. It's a PAED, Project Approval Environmental Documentation. So that project we started, gosh, it's been two years already into that project. So we have about another year and a half to go before we'll pick an official alternative to go uh, into uh, ps &E. So start hmm. going towards construction for that. But it's a fun what, project. What have you, I mean, what point or what, what parts of the project have you enjoyed the most? Um, that project's been the most fun just because it's so big. It's 27 miles long. Wow. So it's, it has a lot of really unique challenges. So it has some steep grades, some, you know, hillsides. It's close to the beach in one segment. There's railroad crossings. There's uh, wildlife connectivity. And even better, we're leading it. So um, our team is leading it all. So it's a very big team overall. And it's it's a great team. I mean, really, when you, my manager mentioned this before when we talked about projects that we like to work on, and he made a great point, which is his favorite projects usually come down to the team that you work with. Mm -hmm. And this is a perfect example. The entire team, I mean, right up to the client and, you know, our subs, just everybody is so fantastic to work with. Um, the whole team has that come together. That can make a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and and there, it's a strong team. It's not like they're just kind of letting things go. It's there's some really good questions that come out of our meetings. We have big meetings every month yeah. with all of our agency stakeholders. Um, we've had a high level of public involvement in it. Uh, so it's it's just a really interesting project with a strong team. So wow, it makes it great. fun and exciting. I hope those that are listening that are interested in transportation engineering are hearing all these little details come out of a big project. Uh, maybe some of those things might excite somebody down the road, uh, get into transportation engineering. I think that's really neat. So um, I want to ask you some quick questions, some short answers. You can answer these quickly. You could be short, whatever you want to do with these. Um, but what's an obstacle you faced when becoming an engineer, whether that was school, uh, FEPE, career, a boss? Um, probably just the PE. Just, uh, you know, first, just making sure the documents are there. Track everything <laughs> very closely, very early. You start early on that. <laughs> yes. So yes, documentation's I... a pain. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. So you got to document your projects, right? Yes. And you have to work under a PE. So yes. don't forget that. If you're looking at jobs um, and you're finding out that, you know, your manager doesn't have his license, that might be an issue if you can't find someone to sign off on the work that you're doing. So good point. Um, Melissa, what's the best advice you've ever received or just some good advice in general you could share? Uh, the best advice, um, which I shared earlier, was just build those connections. Okay. Uh, they're important. So uh, long term in your career. Perfect. Um, what's a personal habit that's contributed to your success? Do you feel like? Um, good habit. That one's probably uh, just trying to be very responsive to my team. And that's probably the one that I get the strongest response on as well, even if the response is you know, providing a, you know, let me Time look line. into that. Yeah. yeah. Providing a date. Let me, give me a few days and I'll get back to you. But just being able to provide some form of response, not leaving people hanging. Oh, I totally agree with you. I hate, <laughs> I hate sending something out, not knowing if anything's ever being done with it. You know, send <laughs> me a response that you've looked at it or, you know, Give me a day oh my, on this or something. I'm known to get a little bit more ag aggressive on sending multiple emails oh, and attaching no. read receipts if uh, people don't respond to me. So. Oh, boy. This is honest. I, I start, yeah, I start getting a little squeaky there. <laughs> oh, so, uh, you know, communication is good, everybody. Communication. Um, how about this one? What's uh, Who's someone you look up to and why? You know, um, this is kind of a, not so much as a single person, but multiple people. Um, 
with, and it's, I, I'm trying to figure out how to word this exactly. Um, <laughs> so there are several women engineers in our industry that yeah. are um, making waves and it's very admirable in what they're doing. Um, hmm. One is a young engineer that I worked with at my previous company who um, was the YMF president for locally in Orange County for ASCE and has created some great programs locally that I'm hoping she'll be able to expand, but she's really making some waves in that aspect. Um, her name's Jazzy hmm. Quanavo. And cool then, name. um, yeah. Um, and then there's another one and I actually found this one from, um, uh, from Jazzy and she's on Instagram. Her name in her handle is Chloe, the engineer, hmm. and her whole Instagram is focused on showing that basically women can be engineers and still be women <laughs> yes. they, they can be all these other things they don't they don't have it's not one or the other it's you know to break those stereotypes and breaking the molds of what we can and can't be wow that's fantastic uh we'll have to link some of those resources those names in the show notes so people can go find them so that'll be fun um so I, bringing up that, I guess that topic a little bit, has there been any challenges as a woman in, in, in the engineering role that you've seen? I'm just curious if, if, if that's been a challenge or if just, you know, work is normal or what? Oh, absolutely a challenge. Um, and I'm very cautious about the engineering firms that I've worked with as a result. Uh, mm. I worked at one very, very briefly as a result. I left very quickly because I had a senior engineer tell me that um, women, that he's never met a good female engineer. Hmm. And it was at that moment that I knew that was not, that was not somewhere I fit. wanted to work. Yeah, <laughs> it was someone that clearly lacked confidence in the capabilities of women who are very much capable. Sure. Um, and likewise, I've um, been put in situations where, um, you know, I was personally discriminated against because I had children, mm. um, you know, by my coworkers that would make comments that were just frankly inappropriate. Sure. Um, and so it is a struggle. And I think, you know, women are starting to become much more vocal about it. Um, the Me Too movement certainly helped. We had um, a lot of our prominent women leaders uh, are starting to, within the engineering community, are starting to share their stories. And they are very common, unfortunately, much more common than I would like to say that they are. Yeah. But likewise, um, thankfully, there are a lot of men that are seeing it as well and pushing back and helping to help support the women. Um, my company is a great example. I mean, they're really setting up to empower women and help us grow and supporting us. I mean, that's definitely, you know, that is not something they, they stand for or tolerate to discriminate us. And um, yeah, that's great. They really help uplift us. So oh, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, women are just as capable as men at doing engineering stuff. So, you know, that's, it's interesting to hear your point, your stories that you have, because, you know, I think guys put the blinders on on a lot of this stuff and they don't see those issues. But it's it's good to hear for, from you on the issues that that you have faced in your own journey to get where you're at. So thanks for sharing yeah. that. Of course. Um, yeah. Any more on that? Oh, no, I was just going to say, yeah, when you mentioned the blinders, yeah, it's important that people share too. I mean, even if yeah. it's not directly them impacted because, you know, it's it's just bringing the knowledge to the forefront to prevent it from happening. Yeah, for sure. Well, hopefully, you know, being on a podcast episode might <laughs> yeah. help somebody out there. So appreciate that. Um, do you have any sweet resources that you would recommend to anybody? This could be a book. Um, a book on leadership, education, fun, anything that stands out? So, um, one of the ones that I would recommend is not so exciting, mm -hmm. but, um, it's one that I'm actually working towards myself, but it would be, um, I would recommend reading the PMBOK and working towards the PMP. Oh. Okay. So, um, I see a lot of 
for my operations role that pretty much follows pretty dang closely to what the BIMHOC has. Um, but it's great for understanding the business side of what we do. So, and it really gives you a, a really strong understanding of all the phases that a project goes through. For project management, right? Yes. So, yeah, the PMBOK is a book uh, that will help you to become a project manager. You can become a PMP, project management professional. So, um, yeah, that's a good book. And it's probably the next step. I don't know, that, that credential is becoming more and more popular, I've noticed. And yes. more people want that PMP. So, you know, I'm sure there are more engineers that want to earn that as well. And I think that's a good, it's a killer combination too. So it'd be good to get. So a good resource. Um, this is a kind of a fun question, but if you had all the resources or knowledge in the world, what's something that you would really like to be a part of? Something I would really like to be a part of. Um, I don't know. I would, to have all the resources, I'd probably, obviously having a family as you mentioned makes it a little more challenging, but I'd probably try to be more involved in doing something along the lines of Engineers Without Borders. I think it's a great program um, mm -hmm. to be able to go help and put our knowledge and our skills to use in communities that truly need the help. Yeah. So and that's I, something that is so important. I agree. That would be really fun to do. I'm in the same boat. I got the three kit girls. I've got twins. Um, you know, there's a lot of pink and purple going on here. And <laughs> we're just, you know, in kid mode. So. Uh, yes, I hear you on that. <laughs> times and seasons. <laughs> yes. Wow. So Someday I keep watching it. <laughs> well, is there any last piece of advice you'd like to share with the community? Um, and what's the best way to get a hold of you if people wanted to reach out to you? Maybe about your experiences or questions about even transportation engineering. So I'm on LinkedIn. So um, I can. If you want to share that link, I'm awful at with links, but I will, I'm definitely... share it. I will find it. I'll share. So it. I, I'm definitely on LinkedIn. So um, definitely, I, like I mentioned before, um, that's my goal is to always be responsive. I'm not on LinkedIn probably all that much, but um, if I get messages, I try to respond on there. So I'm definitely on there. And um, last my advice: get involved. Get involved in the community and um, in programs. I do a lot of presentations for to try to give back when I can um, to students. Our company does a lot with WTS, ASCE, uh, you know, and trying to do what we can to share what we do and provide resources. So it's there, there's great programs out there. Take advantage of them. Perfect. So. Well, Melissa, thank you for being a guest on the show. This was really fun. I, I think we learned a lot. You shared a lot about you know, transportation engineering, your experiences. I, I think this was really fun and I think the audience will really enjoy it. So thank you for being on the show. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, we'll see you later. All right, bye Isaac. Bye. We need more women in engineering. She was great. Gone. Uh, she gone. Cheers. Okay, we'll see you next time. Boop.